This summer, meet the magical mermaid at VGP Marine Kingdom from April 12th to May 31st. India challenged the power of the Western world in 1982 when a team quietly arrived in Antarctica to set up a scientific research base. The mission was named Gangotri. Today, India has a significant presence on the white continent with two research stations, Bharti and Maitri. The first one was Dakshin Gangotri, but it was submerged in snow and abandoned in 1989. Why am I talking about Antarctica now? The Antarctic Treaty Consultative Meeting and Meeting of the Committee for Environmental Protection are being held at Kochi and India has formally informed the member countries of the Antarctic Treaty of its plan to build a new research station, Maitri 2. Once the new research station is completed, the Maitri which was built in Jan 1989 will be turned into a heritage monument. Why is Antarctica important for India? Why is Antarctica important for anyone? That's what I'll be explaining in this section of the video. Antarctica is the only continent that has never experienced war, has fully protected environments and prioritizes scientific research. It is the only continent without a native human population. Antarctica was confirmed to be a continent in 1840. There were many explorations in the early 20th century, but human activity in the region remained minimal. After the Second World War, scientific research in Antarctica surged and around the same time, countries began to claim Antarctica to expand their empires. First among these countries was, of course, Britain. Then came New Zealand, France, Australia, Norway, Chile and Argentina. Nazi Germany also flew over an area in Antarctica and called it Neuschwabenland and dropped big darts with swastikas. Most countries did not recognize any of these claims. Geopolitical tensions were high in the 20th century with the world wars, cold war, independence movements in several countries and weakening of European powers. At that time, Antarctica was this huge landmass with no regulations. The very thought that this piece of land could be used for military purposes was uncomfortable for many countries. And this led to the Antarctic Treaty, which was signed in 1959 by 12 countries and became effective from 1961. Now there are 56 signatory countries. The treaty applies to the area south of 60 degrees south latitude and provides a legal framework for the activities on the continent. It ensured that the continent was used only for peaceful purposes. It banned military testing and military bases. It banned nuclear explosions and nuclear wastes. It promotes international scientific cooperation including the exchange of research plans and personnel and requires that results of research be made freely available. The treaty has protocol on what to do when there is a dispute between countries and also specifies that the countries should meet every 30 years to review the document. In addition to the treaty, the environmental protocol and the convention on the conservation of Antarctic marine living resources are integral components of the Antarctic treaty system and they play important roles in Antarctic governance. All this seems perfect. But what about the claims that were laid earlier? This is where the treaty gets a bit wishy-washy. According to the Antarctic Treaty, scientific stations are not to be associated with territorial claims. That is, the signatories do not have to recognize those claims. They do agree that no new claims will be made and that existing claims will be left as is. Now comes an interesting part. The US and Russia do not recognize any of these claims and reserve the right to make their own claims in the future if they choose to. So nobody else is allowed to claim anything but the US and Russia can if they want to. Even though they do not have any claims now, both Russia and the US and also China have been gradually expanding their presence in the continent through various scientific campaigns. But why do countries even care about claims and who the continent belongs to? Isn't Antarctica just a massive spread of ice with just penguins and seals wading through it? Well, no. Reports say that this landmass is rich in natural resources like oil, coal, natural gas and a lot of minerals. 
but the Antarctic Treaty bans commercial mining of any sort. This protocol was added to the treaty in 1991 and it came into force in 1998. One of the clauses in that protocol says that it could be reviewed by the signatory countries in 50 years, that is in 2048. By then, if enough nations agree to change it, commercial drilling could become a possibility. So, many nations feel that it is in their best interest to solidify their claims in Antarctica. As I said earlier, the US and other countries are expanding their presence and especially US is having its bases inside all territorial claims. So, these countries could argue that none of the claimants stop them from setting up base and therefore there is no sovereign territory in Antarctica. Throughout recorded history, if one thing is constant, it is humans have been relentlessly possessive about their territorial claims. I mean, was, where and are being fought for that. The Antarctic Treaty is one of the most successful treaties and so none of those changes might happen when the signatories meet and the nations might want to preserve the continent as agreed originally. Until things unravel more than two decades from now, we can be confident that there is at least one place on earth humans cannot pollute. This summer, meet the magical mermaid at VGP Marine Kingdom from April 12th to May 31st. 